The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer-to-peer. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, buddy, how's it going, Ooh, man? Body. I don't All see right. a, uh, a church video. Oh, uh, you know, that's a good point. I thought that I'd... Oh, shit. Uh, two seconds here. How about now? Got it. Bam. Cool. Sorry about How's that. That's good. How about yourself? It's going. <laughs> Lately, was, I find it, uh, my... was it a crazy week this week, buddy? I haven't, I haven't really been paying much attention. No, none of these weeks seem to be crazy. It's like we get, um, we get one crazy week a month, maybe one crazy week every two months, and then things just kind of bleed out. It's been the, the pattern here for the last. Like, we love our stable coin. Yeah. Let's see. I guess we could start with Monero. Um, yeah. So you can see that, uh, you know, it's kind of slightly going down, had a nice big pump and then currently sitting about 7% down from there. Um, yeah, we, uh, honestly, uh, I'm not really sure what to make of this price action. I'm not sure which side of it I want to be on. I'm afraid of missing out if it pumps. Um, I'll be sad, you know, if it drops and be like, oh, I should have known better. The signs were there. Um, the So I guess maybe we'll start with macro, actually. That's probably a better place to look because um, I guess a few different things have, have happened. Um, let's see. This week, oh, one of the one of the interesting things that happened is um, standard and poor. So the S&P uh, downgraded um, Moody's. Or sorry, <laughs> let me rephrase that. The S and the S and P five hundred, um, which is like Standard and Poor's, they downgraded the U.S. debt from AAA to AA, and that's only happened like one other time. Um, that was in two thousand eleven, and I think it was is it Moody's uh, had downgraded the U.S. debt, and then <laughs> and then the United States government um, started investigating them uh, over like supposedly unrelated things, but you know it was probably connected. Um, these are like these are the rating agencies that failed to properly rate all of the debt in 2008 from like 2006 to 2008, all the housing debt. So anyways, um, yeah, that was that was interesting. That hasn't happened for over a decade. The U.S. debt hasn't been downgraded. But what's weird is that um, the dollar index, like it didn't seem to care. It just kind of jumped back up um, in my mind. Like everything that we've been talking about for the past few months is still basically on the table here um, with the potential for. Uh, this reversal that we talked about in the dollar. Um, when this happened, um, I guess they even faked me out. I was like, wow, I was kind of expecting to get into this area here, eventually break to the upside. Um, but then things crashed down so hard. But this really just kind of looks like a this area right here just looks kind of like a fake out now. So the dollar index is showing some strength again. It's basically back inside of this zone where you say, hey, a bottoming pattern could be happening. Um, you know, I... That doesn't have to happen right away. Again, that could that could wait until September. It could wait until October. For a long time, um, for like maybe since maybe it was March or April, May, whenever the the announcement that the BRICS meeting was going to happen in August. In my mind, I looked at that and I said, "Yeah, that sounds socially, you know, like a, a good place to maybe look for a top uh, in the markets and a, a kind of reversal." There's um, there's there's kind of like a little bit of a fight going on between some of the more prominent. Um, like some of the guys that called the bear market, um, uh, there's like maybe a handful of them. And right now, none of them, they don't really agree on exactly where the markets are going to go. Some people are saying, you know, there's a recession coming end of year, maybe early next year. You know, markets are going to go down. Um, some people are still calling for Bitcoin 11K. I don't I don't think we would make it that far. But if we had like a true crash of the market, um, that would probably actually happen. Um, but then there's other people that are saying, you know, up the direction is up and this is just, you know, slow turning until we get there. So um, let's see here right on the macro, you know, we can look at uh, stuff like rates. We can look at things like the 10 year yield. Um, basically this thing was ready to pop off to the top side uh, after it broke there, kind of tested that and then started coming up again. Like this moment right here is when like, if I don't really trade any of these um, yield spreads or anything, but if you were a trader in that regard, you would have looked at this and said, okay, that was a retest and, and you're going to get some upward action here. Um, so that's a 10 year yield. We've got crude oil. Uh, it's a bit weird. Yeah. This chart is weird now because if you look at it on log scale, which I think you pretty much should, 
Um, it screws you up because oil went negative <laughs> in, uh, in the whole 2020 crash. Oil actually went negative. Um, that was for, classic. For, for, yeah, like like the U.S. dollar. The I, I was reminded of that Rick and Morty episode where he's like, watch kids as uh, his grandpa collapses an empire by changing a one to a zero. <laughs> and it was like their single centralized currency was worth zero of itself where it used to be worth one of itself. That's kind of what I thought here about the dollar and oil. Um, okay. But anyways, let's go back to logarithmic here. Um, so yeah, oil is basically staying stable, which again is, you know, kind of the thing you want to see. Um, but it does have these upward price pressures now. Like it, it sort of formed support here. It really what's like a very long-term kind of support line uh, topped out there. So Right now, I guess oil looks like it's going to be back in this kind of triangle range. But at this moment, to me, the direction is up. Like oil should continue to explore this range here. Um, and that, you know, that, that would kind of signal that higher prices could still be on the way. In my mind, that does kind of signal the potential for inflation to continue being a bit sticky. Maybe it won't be at 10 percent, but, um, you know, it, it could be sticky at 4 percent, 3 percent, at least the, the core inflation. Um We've got the uh, overnight repurchase agreements here. This is, again, money parked with the Fed overnight. They get an interest rate for doing so. They basically get the federal funds rate minus, I think it's 0.1%. Um, yeah, so it's basically like free yield um, with like highly liquid free yield, essentially. Um, low risk, quote unquote. Um, if you believe that the dollar is fine. And for now, I think the dollar is probably fine. Uh, anyways, um, kind of looking at the wave magic stuff, we're looking at... Um, Sort of these long-term bands uh, that are coming up from again. This was this was the bear market as as uh, as people started parking money with the Fed overnight. They were looking for safety. Um, so we have a bunch of long-term standard deviation bands that are essentially rising now from that event. Um, however, we do kind of seem to be uh, getting pretty close to what I would expect is a support uh, area. So. Um, at the moment, you know, we, we sort of like this drop right here of the, uh, uh, of the overnight repurchase agreements was kind of a signal, at least for more stock market gains, the crypto market didn't seem to be able to, um, to, to do much in that regard. Uh, right now it does look like it's encountering some kind of support. I don't know if necessarily you would say anything back here. Um, this could just be more like fundamental, uh, institutions deciding that they don't want to, to be hanging out. Um, and, uh, in, uh, sorry. This was institutions wanting to get in on the action for the stock market. And this right here is, is institutions looking like they're probably a little bit nervous about whether or not the stock market can continue going up. Um, let's look at BT, uh, Bitcoin plus Ethereum market cap. I do think this is probably the more complete way to look at the picture uh, at this moment uh, and probably from here on out. So, um, you know, you can see we kind of have like this big, this big broadening structure and um, prices probably going to try and touch this area right here. Uh, hell, price might even try and touch this area down here. Like I said, I'm I'm not convinced one way or the other. It would be totally unsurprising for like a long bleed out like this happened and then was followed by a big pump. It would be unsurprising to see another pump back up here to the top. Um, I I really don't trust this market, guys. Like at this point, I I feel like, okay, if we really were supposed to have strength, like if this thing was ready to go up and there was all this buying action and everyone's excited and, and the ETFs and whatever, like this right here should have been follow through at least, at least to, you know, to this zone up here. I, I just don't like that. It didn't follow through and it's done that twice now. Like we had this, which was kind of like a little bit of bar pattern blood out for a long time. We didn't even, we didn't even barely get to the top of that right there. That's getting kind of messy. We didn't even get to the top of this right here on this pump, like just barely for a moment. But that was just a, another fake out, right? Boom, and then back down. I I really don't like the way this market looks. Um, I am like for the last couple of weeks, I have been considering whether or not I want to um, just like drop all my positions entirely, even my hodl, um, because it does seem to me like, oh, wow. yeah, I mean, it does seem like Monero, my Monero hodl will always stay in play. I held that through this whole bear market. Why would I sell it now? Um, but, you know, all my other stuff that I call HODL um, or, you know, long term trading stack or whatever, I, I would I would be pretty tempted or I am becoming more and more tempted to get out of that. Um, I would hate to, like, recommend that for anyone in the market pumps. Like, personally, I would be comfortable with it. Be like, all right, the market pumped. I was wrong. Um, but, you know, at least I, I stayed safe and I kept my gains. Uh, I can reenter the market at, at some other point, whatever. How about um, the uh, the BTC halvening, though? Right. I think I saw Adam back even tweeting about it. He's calling for like 100k bitcoin by whatever 
um, <laughs> in order to keep up with the happening. Uh, what, what's your take on that? Um, I think I it's like important socially. I don't think that the the reduction in issuance is really all that big a deal. Um, like it, it is still important. It's fun, like fundamentally, it will still be important this cycle. I think this is the last time it will be important. Um, after this cycle, the reduction in issuance will be so low. Uh, it does seem like the miners are operating at a loss right now and they need Bitcoin. Adam, I think I read Adam Back's tweet where or he replied to a tweet. Someone said it was 98,000 that they needed like a $98,000 Bitcoin. Yeah. Tweet. And then yeah. he was like, no, it's only 60,000 or 58. It's like, oh, <laughs> okay. So just a two X from here. Um, <laughs> By by the happening, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I think that it's it's important. It's more important socially than anything. Uh, it's a good yeah. narrative. People like it. The the four it highlights the four year cycle, which can become self fulfilling. But um, I, I don't think that I necessarily. I don't think I necessarily am like okay. You got to be buying into the happening. Um, I still see kind of rocky times ahead. I, I still think that it's very likely that Bitcoin and the rest of cryptocurrency is going to take another look somewhere down here at the bottom. Um, it doesn't have to be like the absolute bottom. It doesn't have to be 15,000. It could be 20K, right? This could wow. be that moment where 20K is like solid in people's minds because everyone's like, well, the happening is coming up next year. We're, we're finally in Q2, or sorry, we're in Q3. So we're in the second half of, of this year now. Um, and we've got all the, the FOMO with the uh, with ETFs. So, oh, there might be, this might be worth uh, mentioning it seems to me that Binance is up against the ropes here. CZ is now trash talking or f as close as he can trash talking Tether. Um, and I think we even had the DOJ and I didn't verify this story. I apologize. I should have verified it ahead of time. But I read that the DOJ said that they would like to prosecute CZ like criminally. Um, but they're afraid of, of what that would do to people's bags. Essentially, they don't want to be responsible uh, for the consequences of people's losses and causing a run on Binance um, like a run on FTX happened, which is kind of like signaling that they think that Binance is fractionally reserved because if Binance had everything that they said they have, then it would be a matter of, um, you know, okay, they have a run on their exchange. Everyone withdraws their assets, um, but they're still, you know, otherwise solvent. So um, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's in, like that's fundamentally negative. Like that's a negative Binance going down and CZ going down is would be fundamentally negative for crypto. And that would be like heavy short term negative. On the other hand, like we do have BlackRock and Fidelity and all these guys putting in for ETF. Um, it does look like the SEC is I, I think the SEC is going to end up looking like the bad guy here. To me, it looks a little bit more and more like that's the direction things are heading. I think it's likely that these ETFs will eventually get approved. It doesn't have to be soon, but it could be in a few months, could be next year. So those are like fundamentally bullish events. I think ultimately they'll balance out even if Binance does go down. Um, and we also have the Gox coin, of course, um, being released here. And supposedly, I think it's October 31st, maybe it was September 31st. Um, so it's kind of like there's some good stuff on the horizon. There's some bad stuff on the horizon. Um, but overall, like I do think that it's likely that um, like for example, this big, uh, rising wedge we talked about, I do think it's likely this rising wedge is going to break down at some point. Um, could be soon, right? We could come here that that's probably will be like my real, like ultimate criteria to determine if I'm going to exit my long-term positions, um, in everything except for my Monero hodl is if we start getting into this zone right here and then that starts breaking down any move below this line to me is like, I'm, I'm just going to panic dump. I'll be like, Nope, I don't care. Like, Maybe I'm wrong and maybe it's a fake out, whatever. What I'm what I would prefer, what I would really love to see is a fake out to the upside. I would love to see this thing kind of come up here, you know, 32, get to 35, fizzle, and then you know, maybe come down. Um, because I probably will sell this. I'll probably sell a lot if we get to that spot right there. Um, I just don't believe that these markets have have significant strength um to to really continue going very much longer. Um same thing with the stocks, like stocks have a very similar feel to them. Um, they've kind of gotten pretty far ahead of themselves, if you ask me. And I do think that there's a, a pretty, pretty big opportunity that that this probably potentially could be a top in stocks. It's very dangerous to call tops in stocks because they stocks tend to just keep going up and up and up, except for like once every decade, some major crazy washout happens for a moment. Um, so I guess we'll just end here with uh, with XMR. We'll uh, take a quick look at XMR. We looked at the daily here on on XMR USD. Um, we talked about last week that um, you know these lines down here, these these long term uh, uptrend lines are just kind of begging to be touched. Um, so we'll probably it looks like we've already hit that one. Uh, you know, it looks like we're well on our way to, to hitting this one. 
Um, you know, with with this kind of crap that happens, breakdown of these lines um, doesn't spell doom necessarily for the XMR USD price. Um, in fact, uh, the way this looks and the way the rest of the market is setting up, either the whole market needs to pump to push up uh, XMR with it, um, or this line is definitely going to break down if the market decides to break down. So there's there's that. Um, we've got the uh, the ratio on Bitcoin still kind of just chilling out here. Um, again, forming a bottoming pattern. This this again bottoming patterns like this could take a long time. This could this could range around here. You know, it, it could take time before that actually happens. I would again hope that the Gox coin could drive some significant market cap into Monero. Um, we've got this weekly, very long term inverse head and shoulders. Still looks fine. Doesn't look like it's breaking down at all. Um, and if we're looking at if we're looking at the potential for a pullback in the markets, um, you know, a revisit of the lows, something like that, maybe a, a recession scare towards the end of the year, maybe not like a full blown, you know, complete recession, but could be like a recession scare. It, it wouldn't be surprising to see again, if the bull market kind of pops up again for a period of time that Monero shows some strength again. So yeah, this is uh, mm. still continuing to develop. This will take a long time. We'll, we'll just kind of keep an eye on it once a week. We'll only have one candle obviously every week here. Um, so We'll just keep an eye on that. Again, we'll take we'll take a few months. Could take all the way to 2024 to really develop. Um, oh, you know, there was one thing I did kind of want to point out that uh, that I'm seeing here. Sorry to skip from Monero to Ethereum. This is Ethereum versus BTC. And to me, this looks pretty clearly like a falling wedge. So um, again, like I really do think that Ethereum is going to be, is going to outperform Bitcoin next year. Um, Next cycle, it's just got all the degeneracy stuff that people love, and it's building all of this crazy DeFi and quote unquote layer two, most of which is just kind of like, you know, it's not necessarily tech. I mean, it's 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 transactions happening off chain, but you're going to end up having to put a lot of trust with Coinbase or whoever is managing the quote unquote layer two. Um, there are real layer twos, though, in Ethereum, so don't let that stop you. Um, anything Bitcoin can do, Ethereum can also do because it's a generalized, uh, it has a Turing complete. Uh, base layer. So any construction Bitcoin can make, Ethereum can also make. They also have their own lightning network. It's called Plasma. Anyways, um, this is kind of a long-term structure. You know, it could just like sit here and range for a while, go down. At some point, um, this is probably going to break to the upside. Maybe um, maybe after some like washout, some big washout is done. Uh, so divergences seem to have been slightly on the positive end here for the past week, uh, for the most part, slightly positive. Um, and I guess that's about all we have this week, yeah. All right, man. Yeah, I don't know. That, that, that's pretty crazy, though, with the happening. So you, you think there there is a, a very real scenario where Bitcoin just doesn't keep up like it historically has uh, in terms of what the price needs to be to sustain the uh, the mining network? I think like long term for the next bull market, it, it could keep up. Um, but one thing that we have seen, like we, we already see that price and well so sorry let me rephrase this um transaction fees are not replacing block rewards as the block rewards have been dropping transaction fees have not been replacing that so it wouldn't be surprising to expect that price bitcoin price would not necessarily keep up with the mining it, it has been weird to me to watch this explosion of hash power happen on btc and price doesn't keep up and these guys are all mining at a loss like that is kind of weird Maybe these guys know something I don't, um, but I'm not convinced. Like, I'm not convinced about Bitcoin's long-term security budget, so why would I be convinced about the halving and Bitcoin's mm -hmm. price keeping up with the halving? I mean, people can only put so much market cap into it, right? Like, I mean, it can only go so high in terms of the amount of money that's in Bitcoin. Yes and no. Um, so there's, there's kind of these... Uh, You'll, it's really easy to be confused on this because of a lot of the stuff that we see on Twitter. You'll see a lot of Bitcoin maximalists talk about the market cap of global wealth. And that's a totally different thing than the market cap and the supply and demand for money. So like mm -hmm. into even treasuries, that's like the supply and demand for money. And that's much smaller than the supply or than the market cap of global wealth because people don't sell their houses, but once every few years or once every decade or once every 50 years. So you don't necessarily need money to represent that house. Um, you just need enough money to facilitate the exchange and the demand for exchange of goods that are out there. And a lot of goods are illiquid and they don't get sold very often. So um, Bitcoin's market cap, like, I mean, it, it could legitimately hit $10 trillion, I think, um, you know, by the end of the decade, like that's, that's legitimately possible could happen. Um, that would be what uh, a 10 X. So 
half a million dollars. Bitcoin could probably hit half a million, half a million dollars by 2030. That would probably be some kind of blow off top, you know, at the end of the decade here. Um, you know, so Bitcoin could have a significantly larger market cap. That's possible. It could take time to get there. Um, I do think that it has a lot of competitors. I think that we saw this bear market Bitcoin below 50% dominance for the entire time. It just barely got back to 50. Um, I'm, I'm not even sure that it will be able to hold that. Um, and again, like with the security budget, I'm just, yes, Bitcoin can go pretty high, but I'm just not convinced that, that fundamentally the network is designed in a way that, that will send it to like astronomical market caps. I, I think it's hit diminishing returns already. There we have it. Body. Do doom and gloom for Bitcoin. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, the picture doesn't look good right now. So, the so I mean, do you think, uh, you know, there's everybody throws around this potential scenario of a, like a, a death spiral, right? In the, in the scenario where Bitcoin price doesn't go high enough uh, to meet the happening, miners have to start, uh, you know, uh, pulling, um, unplugging, right? Um, do you think that that's a potential scenario or that's just like, uh, never going to happen. I do. I don't know. I don't, I don't like to be, um, outlandishly, you know, outlandish with my language. <laughs> don't be too doom and gloom. <laughs> yeah. Um, death spiral may probably not a death spiral. Um, I think that what will happen is, so if anyone's read the block value attack, there's a paper called block value attack where, um, essentially one block, because as the block rewards drop, you have fees that are very high. Um, so one block might have a bunch of fees and then the next block might have really low fees, which would incentivize miners individually. They don't have to coordinate would incentivize them to keep mining on the old block, but then keep some of the rewards for the next miner ahead of them to incentivize the rest of the network to orphan that block. I think that we'll start to see weird instability with Bitcoin's uh, mining system before you have any kind of major death spiral blowout. Um, at the same time, I see all this hash power that is completely unprofitable for the meantime. And then you got the halving coming up. And I do worry, like I think to my, cause I mean, I really, I don't want Bitcoin to collapse. Like, all right, like, yes, I, I fight the maxis a lot on Twitter or whatever, but I don't really want Bitcoin to collapse. Um, but I do see all this hash power and um, most of the gains that they've had, like in their Silicon from getting, cause they were, the ASICs were originally on like old technology, old Silicon, easy to fabricate. And now they're on like the cutting edge shit, right? They're on like five nanometer or wherever we're at. So, all of this excess hash power, what happens if like Ethereum flips maybe or Bitcoin has some kind of problem or the price doesn't go as high as everyone like prays that it will go? Then mm. you've got all this excess hash power. You've got all these people that can't continue their mining setup. You've got all these ASICs just floating around in the ecosystem. And what can people, what can these miners do with them to be profitable other than try and sell them or attack the network? I, I like, I don't, I don't it's see all this lead, excess hash power. It's going to lead to uh, centralization. You only have a few big players that could subsidize and, and sustain themselves, right? I mean, that I, that's what I would think would happen, right? You would just have a few big miners that could f finance their way through it, uh, and all the li all the little guys would have to unplug. Yeah, that's always the war that happens um, during a bear market. Is there's it does seem like there's these cycles of hash wars where uh, the big guys are trying to kill off the little miners and acquire their ASICs and making it even less decentralized. Yeah. 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 Well, now we've got greater than 50% of the hash powers all KYC. Yeah. So and then, that? you know, with, with, with an event where there's uh you know, leads to more centralization, it would even, it would even trend further towards that. Yeah. Just, I'm, I'm assuming you'll saw that the, uh, that uh, one of the big mining, I think it was ant pool is doing KYC on all their miners now. Yeah, what? Yeah, can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, so if you want to mine for ant pool, so the two largest pools in Bitcoin um, comprise greater than fifty percent of the hash power, which they yelled at us for last year. If you remember that, they right. told us how how shitcoin Monero and their mining pools right. and blah blah blah. And now they're the the same fucking three three fingers pointed back at themselves. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, yeah. So if if you want to mine on these pools, you you've got a KYC, um, and they're the cheapest pools, so they're the highest incentive to you know to, to point your hash power towards you got to kyc yourself as a miner yeah wow that's who are you where are you at yeah you retweeted that uh the when, when did that, when did that news drop that's that's tremendous. i guess it's been happening but um that was like last week that the news dropped on that wow that's i mean absurd 
compliance is coming for Bitcoin miners. And this is like when Mara tried. Yeah, to I, mean, I know we always said pool. it, but I, I kind of missed that <laughs> one. I mean, that's like, that's a real big step in that direction. That, yeah. That's insane. I even have some friends that There's are a like. Tweet. Uh, from July 13th, last weekend, Antpool's VIP clients gathered in Hong Kong and celebrated the 2023 KYC night. Yeah, let's celebrate KYC, guys. What a celebration. <laughs> no. Jesus. I don't know. So maybe, maybe this is part of the, uh, right, the way everyone gets corralled. Oh, it looks like it's a Chinese, Antpool's a Chinese-based uh, pool. So they're like, they're like really going hard on it. And they're, they're growing it in strength. Like. They're growing in. Percentage. Isn't it ironic that China kicked out their miners, but now like the biggest pool is in China still? Yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. <sighs> All right. Uh, well, never a dull moment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, buddy. We'll we'll keep moving it along, and uh, you'll you'll check in with us next next week on all this. Awesome. Uh, stick around if you can, though. Especially yeah, for, for the new stock. <laughs> love to get your insights. Right on uh let's let's move on to the dev report sweet thanks buddy thanks, thanks buddy